down if you're ready put your head out that way we can move along more smoothly number four was pin five pain pain ready five was pain six ping ping okay six was ping Seven, peg, peg. Ready? Seven was peg. Eight, pen, pen. Eight was pen. Nine, pig, pig. Now, what usually happens at this point is some people go back and change earlier answers. <laughs> is that right? Happens every year. Number nine was pig. Ten, pang, pang. Now, if you don't know the word, spell it as best you can. But the IPA will be the same whether you know the word or not, as long as you're hearing it correctly. Ready? Number 10 was pang. I'm going to read 1 through 10 again. Watch so you get information from my facial gestures as well as from sound. 1, hick. 2, pan. 3, peak. 4, pin. 5, pain. 6, ping. 7, peg. Eight, pen. Nine, pig. Ten, pang. Pretty clear? Probably clearer than last time because I exploded the stops at the end. I'll explain that later. That means there's a bit of air afterwards. That should have helped you. On the other hand, these are words that I know that Taiwanese students have trouble with. So if you're having trouble, then it's to be expected because I've tested many, many people on these words, and almost every Taiwanese student I've taught has problems with these words. OK, so um, last time we had the first 11 people, so number 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Put the answers on the board, please, in sequence. OK, the rest of you exchange papers. All right, let's look over the answers quickly and see if they're all correct. Pick is very good. P 
P-I-C-K, pick. Short I, pick. I exploded the K, pick. Instead of saying pick, pick would be harder to get. Pick is clearer. Second one, pan. So called hu dia a, we can call that digraph. That's what Latifoga calls it, so that's correct. Three is peak. P E E K is also correct. Both are correct. This is Shan Ding. Peak is Tokan. Okay, long E. Four, Hin, short I, and N is correct. Five, Pain. This is correct. Remember, we're writing the K K E, which stood for A. We're going to put an I on there to make it really clear that it's actually a diphthong. So, K K E is a Dandu, the E. I already told you that, right? Okay, but I forgot. <laughs> well, this will remind you, getting something wrong usually is a good way to impress it on your memory. It doesn't feel good, but you remember it. Pain is correct. Six is ping, very good. Ping. We use a short i. In fact, this sound is neither e nor i. It's something in between, but we'll talk about that another day. We have a couple web pages on that. So this is correct. I plus Engma here. And then we have seven, which is needs an, oh, here's the seven. Peg, is spelling's correct. IPA is also correct. And do, don't do anything fancy with your IPA characters. A G looks like this. Because they have different meanings. For example, this is Y, and this is a different symbol. It's like in. So you can't use cursive writing for IPA and still have it mean the same thing. So make sure the G just is a yangzi, nothing fancy. All right, peg is correct. Number eight, pen is good. Number nine, pig. When you heard pig, I bet some of you changed number one from pig to pick. Is that right? Some of you thought number one was pig. Is that right? So I made it easier for you today. I thought maybe you were feeling bad after last time and you wanted to feel better today. So since you know there's a contrast, you know that the first time it was not pig, it had to be something else. So let that be a lesson as well. You don't always have that contrast to tell you. You may have context sometimes, but if in isolation you may not have this contrast. I could have left out the pig. All right, that's correct. And number 10, this is a less common word. So that may be one reason lots of you didn't get it, but I think a bigger reason is a lot of you do not pronounce this word correctly. And I will give you another pair where there's a lot of problems in the plural. Okay, everybody say that. Yes. All right, is this an S or a Z sound? Yes. Thank you. All right, try it again. Yes. Good. Now, this is the next one. Say that one. Some of you have it right. Some former students especially have it right. Okay. Are these different sounds or the same sound? They should be different, but for some of you, I bet they're the same. In Taiwan, most people say bands for this. Is that right? Is that right? Okay. Actually, not only the nasal is different, the vowel is also different. From bands to bangs. It's the same problem we have with pick and pig, that also has a different vowel. And ing, pin and ping. Muin guns a guy. We're not going to talk about it today, I'll just mention it. There's a whole story behind it, but we're not going to talk about it today. Just be alert to it and make sure that you can tell the difference. Everybody, bands. Bands. All right, Liu Hai. Bangs. Bangs. Ang the ang ang ng ng. Bangs. Try it again. Bangs. Bangs. Okay? So, this one was pang. Rhymes with bang. Okay? Pang. Pang means yi zhen tong. Or, she's having pangs of regret. Ha na ge hou hui. Yi zhen yi zhen de hou hui zhe jian shi qing. Pangs. Pangs of childbirth. Pangs. 
pangs of regret. Pangs is just pain. So that's when I told you, even if you don't know the word, if you're hearing it correctly, you can guess the spelling. And in any case, you should get the IPA right. So if you didn't, it's something you need to work on. Final nasals, n and n, ng rather, are one of the biggest problems in Taiwan English. OK, so you've got the score on the paper, percent, five points for each spelling, five points for each IPA spelling. Add it up. Any questions? OK, after you've added it up, return the paper to the owner, look it over, and I welcome questions. Anybody want to ask any questions? If there's something, I'm going to read them all again. But first, tell me if you have any questions. Something that you're not sure about. Can you all see clearly? If you can't, you need to ask somebody for help. OK? Any questions? Anybody want to ask a question? I'm going to read all the items again now that you know the correct answer. Everybody ready? You will also want to watch again, probably, as you listen. One, pick. Everybody ready? One, pick. Two, pan. Three, peak. Four, pin. Five, pain. Six, ping. Seven, peg. Eight, pen. Nine, pig. Ten, pang. OK, questions? Anything you still need repeated? No questions, then please pass your papers towards the front and then Mendy will pick them up. OK? Yeah? Uh, sometimes the N and NG sound is hard to put in. Absolutely right. That's why I put them in the dictation. In Taiwan English, N and Ng are often not distinguished. They're mixed up. Or you have a habit of saying N, -n for some words and Ng for other words, but they're different from what native speakers say. For example, Pang. Most time when you say pan for this one. Instead of bang, you'll say ban. So I can tell you very quickly, we're going to spend more time on it, on it another time. But former students of mine may have heard this before. If you're not a former student, it may be for the first time. OK, former students, please bear with me. We've just learned the different names of the parts of the vocal tract, right? We have alveolar ridge, and we have soft palate, right? Soft palate has another name, which is velum, right? It's also called the velum. That's the difference between these two. Un is an alveolar sound. The tip of your tongue is touching your alveolar ridge. Everybody say pain. Pain. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the tip of your tongue touching your alveolar ridge? Yes. Yes, then it's correct. For this one, the back of your tongue, remember the back, front, center, back, that technical term, is going to touch your soft palate. So tip of your tongue touches your alveolar ridge to make n. Mm. The back of your tongue touches your soft palate, or velum, to make ng. Ng. And in Chinese, it's ang zang, the ang. So if you're having trouble telling the difference, first say n dian. N dian. N, there's n. And then for NG, for the angma, say ang zang, ang. That's the back of your tongue touching your velum. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Right. What's happening in Taiwan Mandarin is in and ing are going together. Un and ng, ye zai he bing. However, an gen ang hai miao he bing. Except in Jinmen, ting shuo. Jinmen may be an an gen ang bu da fen. Is anybody from Jinmen? OK. Sophie, you may have to I'm going to Why don't you think about it? And we can talk about it later. Because I had a student from, from, from Jinmen who told me that I'm going to ang, I'm going to ang, You don't have this problem in your Mandarin. Where? OK. OK. Yeah. You may have to OK. So neither of you have it. I have a student who claimed it was true. So we're going to assume now that an gen ang hai miao he bing. So hai zi fen kai de. So that's why we can use those as reference points to find an gen ang. Because if I tell you sheng yin de yin, 
，到底是鹰有没有尾巴？鹰还是鹰？一般台湾人现在搞不清楚，听不出来，因为开始合并了。喂，开灯，开灯，灯还是灯？ It should be done, but many people say "kai den." Ah, 还没开灯 So 这两个开始合并了 So I can't use either of those to try and help you find the difference between "en" and "eng." But "an" and "ang" are very clear because why? The vowel is different. The vowel is different, and we're going to find out why. "An" and "ang" are actually the same vowel. Why do they sound different? "An" and "yen." 一样都是那个注音符号的安，对不对？母音也不同，都有原因。You will learn all about it in phonetics. An 跟 ang, the reason is, ang ng ng is a velar sound, 对不对？然而很后面，对不对？所以呢，母音也拉到后面去了。啊是很后面的母音，啊是很前面的母音啊，所以安恩是很前面的鼻音。搭配一个很前面的母音，就是这样子。If you followed it, fine. If you didn't, we'll talk about it again another time. But your question is a very core question because in Taiwan Mandarin and in Taiwan English, n 跟 n 不容易分。an 跟 a 分得很清楚，其他的都 it's it's anybody's guess. Okay. So if you had trouble with the items with n and n and you found that you mix some of them up. That means that's a place where you need to work. All of these dictations are valuable information to tell you where your particular problem areas are, and you need to work on them to fix them. Because in English, we cannot mix them up, except ing. Sometimes in casual pronunciation, we say n instead of ing. So the formal pronunciation is I'm going now. The casual one is I'm going now. Going. 从 ing 到 n. It's okay in casual English. And also, in some words, I mentioned this in another class. You can go back to your notes or go back to the video when it's ready. Something is sometimes pronounced something. Sons is some people say something. I have something. 那个怎么样用 KK 写 something？ 其实是可以写的 ，not with KK with IPA. We need more symbols. The point is that English, the ing 这个词尾，有时候在很口语很。Casual 的场合的时候，你可以念作 in, going, doing, looking。可是呢 ，n 跟 n 在其他的场合是不能混在一起。In Taiwan Mandarin, it's okay. You bring it into Taiwan English, and then you have trouble distinguishing words that have totally different meanings. Okay, pan and pang, pin and ping, pick and pig. That's not a nasal. That's a、uh, that's a stop. 可是也是个类似的问题 ，OK， 嗯、um, ，那个是 voicing 的问题。All right, so if you're having trouble with that, you need to work on it, and we'll talk about it in the class. Any other questions? Any other questions? OK, you have all of the tests. Very good. OK, so that's it for that. We're going to the text, and we're on reader number seven, I believe. Is that right? Some parts, if I think it's too wordy, I will just say please stop, and I'll explain it so we can move faster because we need to catch up in the text. Okay. Oh, the air passages above the larynx are known as the vocal tract. All right. There are two compounds in there. Which two? So how should we say it? Right. And vocal tract, we'll treat it as a compound. Vocal is not a noun, but we treat it like a compound because we say vocal tract. Yeah. Air passages, vocal tract. Why didn't you do it again? Oh, the air passages above the larynx are known as the vocal tract.、Um, figure 1.2 shows their location within the head, actually within Peter Latifoge's head, in a photograph taken many years ago. Okay, this makes me kind of sad because he used to say actually within my head, because he's the author. But now he has passed away, so Keith Johnson has to put in references to Peter Latifoge in the third person.、Um, uh, figure. Let's review figure. We talked about it in British English. It's no. Didn't we talk about it in class? Maybe different class. Okay. American is figure. figure. British? Figure. No. 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 Stop. <laughs> it's. Figure. 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 
。That's British English for figure. In American, we say figure. 美式比较完整，英式是比较 relaxed. Figure, figure, figure. But don't say figure for American. It sounds really weird. Okay.、Mm, okay. And let's look at the picture now on page five. You can see the dotted line, and below that it says nasal tract, oral tract. You've already drawn that, so it should be familiar to you. Let's go on.、Um, the shape of the vocal tract is a very important factor in the production of speech, and we will often refer to a diagram of the kind that has been superimposed on the photograph in Figure 1.2. Okay, so this is another tiny little detail. I say important. Just listen carefully. Important, important, and you said important. 实际上 important, in my opinion, 是比较标准 But I hear younger people saying important now. 确实有这个发音 But I recommend you to go with important, important. It's not a d there in theory. Yeah, important, important. It's not wrong. This is all about the most common style of pronunciation, though. Okay. Go.、Um. Learn to draw the vocal tract by tracing the diagram in this figure. Note that the air passages that make up the vocal tract may be divided into the oral, tr oral tract within the mouth. Oral tract. Oral tract. Right. Within the mouth and pharynx, and the nasal tract within. And the, the nasal tract. And the nasal tract within the nose. All right. We have a big break before that and right. Um, oral tract. 然后后面 within 那是跟它在一起的。一个 phrase, right? So we can pause less long there. May may be divided into the oral tract within the mouth and pharynx, big pause, and the nasal tract within the nose. So long and short pauses. 看它跟前面的那个 phrase 的关系有多密切 Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So start timing your pauses. If there is a very close relationship, you need a little pause, but don't make it too long. And then, if you move on to something very different—a new subject, a new idea, or a different part of the sentence—leave a longer pause. Okay, go ahead.、Um, when the flap at the back of the mouth is lowered, as it probably is for you now, if you are breathing with your mouth shut. All right. So let's just think about that. It's too easy to just read words and correct pronunciation and not think about what we're reading. All right. So the flap at the back of the mouth—what do we call that? We didn't call it. We didn't describe it in those terms, but you can figure out what it is. We were just talking about it now when you asked about nasals. What's that flap in the back of your mouth? It's called the the velum or the soft palate. That's what he's talking about. The velum or soft palate. They mean the same thing. Just two different terms for the same thing. So he's talking about the soft palate, but he hasn't taught you yet. You're ahead of him. So that's why he's calling it the flap at the back of your mouth, and it's probably shut now. It's probably no, sorry, not shut. It's open. It's lowered. 降下来了 means it's open. That means air is going from your lungs out where, through what? If that flap in the back of your mouth, the soft palate, if it's lowered, and you're just sitting there breathing, you're not talking, you're not eating, you're not saying hmm. Anything like that, or d、mm, wouldn't be、uh, what we wanted here. D would change it. So if you're just sitting there breathing, not eating or drinking, that flap is raised or lowered. If it's lowered, then it's open. If it's raised, it's closed. So the soft palate. Think of the drawings that you made. If the soft palate is lowered, and you're breathing, the air is going from your lungs out where. Through your nasal passages, if you want to say it that way, your nose. That's right. So it 降下来了 That means air goes out through your nose. So if you're just sitting there, fat die, doing nothing, then your velum is lowered, and the air is going out over the velum through your nose and out. Everybody got it? All right. Velum is lowered. Air is going through your nose, going out through your nose. Okay. So think about it as you're reading. That'll save us some time. Go ahead. Air goes in and out through the nose. Speech sounds, speech sounds such as n、mm、and n、mm、are produced with the vocal folds vibrating and air going out through the nose. 
The upper limit of the nasal tract has been marked with a, do a dotted line since the exact boundaries of the air passages within the nose depend on soft tissues of variable size. That's right. This is a very important area because remember I told you this hymen zuzhi. Remember that we have spongy tissue there and it has an irregular shape, so it's not easy to It depends on the individual. It's a very round zuzhi. The shape is not uniform. Everybody understood? Let's keep going. That was very nice reading. Thank you. Next. Eight. Ah, microphone. Uh -huh. The parts of the vocal tract that can be used to form sounds, such to as... To form sounds? To form sounds. 对，刚刚你中音没有放在 sound 上面，可是 sound 是一个实词，所以要放中音。To form sounds. To form sounds, such as the tongue and the lips, are called articulators. Everybody got that? Because a lot of people don't know how to say this. They say articulators, or they say really funny things. So articulators. Listen to me say it a few times. Articulators. Articu Just listen a few times. Just use your ears for now and keep the impression in your brain. Articulators. 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 All right, I'll say it again. Listen to the echo in your head. Students, former students, you know what I'm talking about. 听头脑里面的那个回音 ，articulators. Go. Articulators. Good. Okay. Go on. Before we discuss them, let's summarize the speech production me mechanism. As a <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Remember, like the first class. Okay, not Mac though. Mac. Mech. Everybody, please mark this. Put it in your notes because we go through this every single semester. Sometimes in the second semester, it is not mechanism. You didn't hear that. Mechanism, 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 mechanism. Got it? So let's do with that what we just did with articulators. I'm going to say it three times, then we'll use the echo. So, mechanism. No, don't say it. Just listen. Mechanism. 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 All right, now wait for the echo. Mechanism. Go. Mechanism. Mechanism. Go. Mechanism. Okay, that's the echo method. It's easier to keep it in your brain that way. So mechanism, first syllable, and don't say mechanism, it's mechanism. All right, that's the first problem. The second problem is we have a bunch of nouns together. Right? Yeah, there you go, Stanley. Perfect. Speech production. Everyone, speech production. Speech production. All right, speech production is two words that are very close to each other. Now, let's add a mechanism. There is no sound behind the sound. So, speech production mechanism. Behind the two words, there is no sound. Because speech production is already fixed. It's already done. Let's add a side word to it. It's also no sound behind the sound. It's also no sound behind the sound. It's also no sound behind the sound. So listen, no echo this time. Speech production mechanism. Say it again. The speech production mechanism is a whole. 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 Okay, everybody, vowel. Before L, the O sound. It's not hall. It's whole. O, 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 O. Everybody, whole. 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 动跟整个有没有 W 对我来说都一样 ，so it's in the whole, the whole thing. 都是欧欧洲的欧 whole. Okay, go on. All right, we're going to summarize the speech production mechanism as a whole. Go ahead. Figure one point three shows the four main components. Very good. Let's look at one point three before you continue. Turn the page and look at one point three, just so you know what he's talking about when he's reading. All right? So flip back and forth. You can either listen or flip or whatever you want. Um, go ahead. The air stream process. Hmm? <coughs> you come. One by one. When you find, there are many words that are mixed up. Find the two closest relationships and clean them. The first one is air and stream. These are two words. So we say air stream, not air stream, right? Air stream. This is good. 然后呢，后面还有一个名词，被修饰的名词没有重音 ，so we say 
跟刚刚那个 speech production mechanism 是一模一样。Go ahead. The airstream process. Yes. The fination process. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. The oral nasal process, and the articulatory process. Articulatory process. Articulatory process. Now, articulatory is an adjective. 照理说 process 应该这一个词里面 process 应该放重音 But how many times have we said the word process already? Three times. In English, the first time you say a content word, it's stressed. The second time, you don't stress it anymore. 因为是旧的讯息所以已经讲了三遍，你不会特别强调它，因为已经讲了很多次，很熟。So 还是一样是 the articulatory process. All right, trick question. What is process? What does it mean? We have four main components in the speech production mechanism in that figure: airstream, fination, oronasal, articulatory. But it's all process. Okay, process has a special meaning, and I don't know if this is exactly the meaning that they mean here. But here, it's it means 吐出来的东西 That's the meaning of process in phys in in anatomy and physiology. And here, they're talking about a collection of organs used for a special purpose. That's what they mean here. 是一个那个器官的组合是用来做就为了某一个目的啊，做一个一个一个器官的组合 That's what they mean here. Okay, process actually means a 吐出来的东西 like the velum. We'll come to that later. So in any case, we can we can also think of it in 过程 as 过程 but it's not really 过程 when you're looking at a at a picture. So 过程 is not the right translation here. It's four collections of organs, each for a certain purpose, in speech production. So process here is not 过程 um, Let's find out what those four are. Go ahead. The airstream process includes、嗯嗯、the airstream. The airstream process includes all the ways of pushing air out, and as we will see later, of sucking later. it later, later、mm -hmm. of sucking it in,、mm -hmm. that provides the power of spe for speech.、Mm -hmm. For the moment, we have considered just the respiratory. <laughs> System. Respiratory system. This is a fuhasin. Just the respiratory system. The lungs pushing out air as the prime mover in this process. All right. Stop there. There is process number one. So for those of you who want to organize your notes and ideas, there are four components to speech production. The first one is the airstream process. And what is that all about? What does it concern? It con concerns what? Yeah, air as a source of energy driving speech. Is that right? So everything that is involved in driving air as an energy source of speech—that's the airstream mechanism, okay? Or airstream process, they're calling it here. So that's one. Keep that separate. Now this is air being pushed out to produce speech. There are other ways. To produce speech with air doesn't always have to be pushed out, but we won't talk about that now. That'll come later. All right, here's number two. The fination process is the name given to the actions of the vocal folds. Of the vocal folds. Vocal folds. All right, everybody, watch these compounds. Some of them have a, an adjective as the first component. They're still compounds, or they're pronounced as compounds. All right, fonation is voicing. That's easy to remember. Phone is sound. Phonation is voicing, 有声无声 Remember that you learned before. That's phonation. So airstream is pushing the air out to drive speech. Phonation is voicing, and continue. Only two possibilities have been mentioned: voiced sounds in which the vocal folds are vibrating, <coughs> the vocal folds、right. are vibrating. And voiceless sounds in which they are apart. All right. Now, how do we produce voice sounds? The vocal folds are vibrating. They're together, bing long la, and they're vibrating. Air is pushing up through them, and they pop open and shut, and that makes them vibrate. That's a voice sound. That's how a voice sound is produced. 
How about voiceless sounds? How are they produced? What are the vocal folds doing? They're open. And we're just breathing air out. Okay? So that's phonation. There are more kinds of phonation. Those are not the only two, but those are the only two we've talked about so far. We'll learn about the other ones in which chapter? Do you remember? Six. Remember? Airstream mechanisms and phonation. And I told told you that one student, after we finished the chapter, didn't know what either one was. So pay attention now, and then you'll be well prepared for chapter six when you come back next semester. Okay, so phonation is voicing, and we only have two choices now. Either it's the vocal folds are vibrating, we have voicing, or they're wide open, and we have air coming out fast. That's voiceless, okay? The possibility of the airstream going out through the mouth as in v or Z, or the nose, as in n and n, is determined by the oronasal process. Good. All right. The oronasal process. Oronasal process. Oronasal process. That is whether the what? Nagatiguan. The soft palate or the velum is raised or lowered. The oronasal process is about whether a sound is oral, ko de, or nasal, bi chang de, bi yin. And that is decided by whether the soft palate is lowered and open or raised and closed. So, feng bi de, na ge jiu si ge ko chang yin, kong qi bu hui zong bi zi chu lai. Zhang xia lai de shi kai de, chang kai de, na kong qi hui zong fei dao. Bi chang zong bi zi chu lai. Na ge bi yin. Okay? So that's part three of the speech production mechanism. We were going on to part four. The movements of the tongue and lips in interacting with the roof of the mouth and the pharynx are part of the articulatory process. Good. Articulatory process. So the stuff that Mostly stuff that I remind you of in class. Shuang chun yin, lips together for m, mm, name. It's not nay, it's name. Or it's t, it's alveolar. Tip of your tongue touches your alveolar ridge. Or it's ng, mm, the back of your tongue touches the velum, etc. Those all belong to what process? The articulatory process. Okay, that's it. So look at the figure on. Page six, again carefully, and look at the dotted lines where they're circling the areas of these different processes. Okay? Very good. Nice reading. Thank you. And next, say your name first. Okay? All right. Is this a compound? Yes. Everybody, how do we say it? Yeah, we're going to use this, this uh, expression a lot. It's like a pian yu. It's a compound. Everyone, sound waves. Sound waves. Good. Remember that this is a compound. Go. So far, we. So far. So far. Far. Sing the little song. Far. Far. I think I'm going to have to take time to tell you why we do that. Because at the end of every utterance, we'll have a bunch of stresses, but the final stress is the highest. For example, um, I'm going to the store to buy some bread. Bread is really high, right? I'm going to the store to buy some bread. The last stress in every utterance is especially high. We call it the, right, we talked about it, the tonic stress. And if we are done speaking, okay, this is a chong fu, because I think it's very new, so a lot of people don't really have it in your brain yet. It starts high and falls if it's the end of a sentence or the end of an idea or a semicolon. But if it is a comma and we're not finished yet, what do we do? We have a continuation rise. So remember it's a shape like this. And we gave it a little name. In previous classes, we called it sing the little song. Sing the little song. That means tonic stress, fall up with a continuation rise. So whenever you're not done, you're mostly going to need this little song with this shape. So your paragraph is so far, so far, okay? 
So far,、right. we have been describing speech sounds by stating how they are. Describing what? How they are made.、Mm-mm. Describing what?、Huh? Describing speech sounds.、Mm. Speech. This habit, oh, is very difficult to get rid of. Most of you were not aware at all of compound noun stress before this, right? 一点都没有听说有这回事 So it's going to take a lot of awareness, paying attention, and preparing before you read, because you won't do it naturally. I do it mostly without thinking. Native speakers mostly do it just because we've got an echo telling us that's that's what's correct. But if we are recording a book, like an audio book, like my father used to do. And we're not sure of the meaning. We didn't read ahead, so we misinterpreted. We guessed the wrong meaning. So he might have thought it said, "Speech sounds really good if you have a good voice." Maybe he thought it was a verb. So my father might say, "Describing speech sounds sounds really good." 不对啊 ，speech sounds is actually a noun. It's not a verb. So my father would stop the tape recorder. He used to record books for the blind. 他以前是那个做那个有声书的录音，是给盲人的录音。So I've been listening to recorded books for, it was like 30 years when I was a kid. I heard it many, many years, and sometimes he guessed the wrong meaning. He'd have to stop and re-record with the correct intonation. Instead of speech sounds, it's speech sounds. So you must read ahead, and if you know which paragraph you're going to read, prepare ahead of time and mark the compound nouns because you'll probably get stopped up each time if you don't. So by describing speech sounds. Uh, not by. Go ahead. Describing speech sounds. Describing speech sounds by. Speech. I'll go again. Speech sounds. Speech sounds.、Mm-hmm. Can by, you go a little higher? Speech sounds. Speech sounds.、Yeah. By stating how they are made, but it is also possible. Mm-mm, not also. It's also. Everybody, just 张开嘴巴 Just open it. All. All. Perfect. Also. Also. Don't say also. It's not also. It's also. Go ahead. It's. Also possible to describe them in terms of what they can hear. Of, in terms of what? What in terms of in, what? In what? Describe them in. In. Terms. No. What's term, wrong? Terms. Yeah.、In、you caught it. All right. Let that be a reminder. If you see an M, read an M. 在词尾 at least. 词首有一些例外 like mnemonic. 词首有一些 m 不发音 ，but if you see an m at the end of the word, say it. And you probably have a habit of saying things like turns instead of terms. That's Taiwan English. You need to fix it. Okay, you should fix that. So terms, go ahead. In terms of what they can hear. Of what? What we can hear. There we go. <laughs> Very good. All right, the bell has rung. We need a break. Okay. We were talking about An Ang, and then a couple of you. I guess a lot of you have friends. Maybe one friend. An ang 不分的是不是 Do a lot of you have a friend? Is it an ang 不分的一个朋友有没有 Maybe not a lot of you, but a couple of you do. And you came to t- tell me about it now. Can everybody read this correctly? <laughs> Beautiful. You don't have this problem. Wow. <laughs> oh, we we have a friend. He always says 糖环糖环坏掉了糖环 always. 而且只要是 n 跟 n 两个字放在一起 ，he will always do that. So I think it's a, it's an individual problem. 就是某一些个人有这个问题。And someone said it's 仔仔这个，也，他就是安安，不会分了。All right, that's back to that.、Um, any questions before we continue? That's it. Let's keep going. We finished one sentence. What did we learn from that sentence? Let's review. First of all, sound waves is a compound. Don't say sound waves. Sound waves means 声音会遭受 Hey, sound waves. <laughs> 不对哦 Sound waves 是声波 All right. And so far, so far, so far, singing the little song. That's another thing we learned or we reviewed. We have been describing speech sounds. We're remembering to use compound noun stress where we need it by stating how they are made, and not we are made, they are made. Stating how they are made. Now I stressed how a lot because how they are made actually puts us a how. Made 也要放重音 How they are made. We'll see in the next part. 
but it is also possible to describe them in terms, everybody watch the M, not turns, terms, turns, in terms of what we can hear, how they are made, and what we can hear. That's why we have to stress it so much. So, by stating how they are made, but it is also possible to describe them in terms of what we can hear, what we can hear. So, instead of just saying what our organs are doing to produce a sound, we're going to say what we hear, how we hear a sound, or Let's go on. The way in which we hear a sound depends on its acoustic structure. Very good. All right, make sure we understand what we're saying. The way we hear a sound, Now, we don't really know about 声学 yet unless you have studied it yourself in physics. So let's keep going. We want to be able to describe the acoustic of speech for A many acoustic? reasons. Acoustics uh -huh. of speech for many for many reasons. For more blah on blah blah. Uh, that's a wonderful book by Keith Johnson. He's the guy who revised this book. That's a wonderful, wonderful book on acoustic phonetics. If so if you wanna it's a little too hard for us right now, but in the future you should definitely you read that book, go through that book. It's a really good one. Okay? Linguistics and linguists. Linguists. Right. Just yuan shuijia. And speech pa pathologists. Pa almost, that's pretty good. Speech pathologists. This is another fuhetsu. This is another compound. Speech pathologists. Speech pathologists. Good need to understand how certain sounds become confused with one another. All right. So we're talking now about how we hear sounds. Up till now, we were talking about how we produce sounds, how we make sounds. Now we're talking about how our ear perceives sounds. And this is important because they're saying in one application of phonetics, which is speech pathology, we have to be able to analyze sounds to understand why some people mix up two sounds. Okay, maybe they mix up R and W, like Kelwin instead of Karen, like one of my classmates said in kindergarten. Kelwin, can you come play with me? Okay, Kelwin. So that's not negabuzio pathology. Most children actually have that problem. But in, if they get older and they still can't figure it out, they still can't fix it and they have other problems, they may need to see a speech pathologist or therapist. Okay, so we need to understand how we hear sounds in order to help people who have speech problems. Okay, go ahead. We can give better descriptions of sound, sound, some sounds. Some sounds. Different some. vowels. Some sounds. Some. Not some. 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 Everybody watch, listen. Some. 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 If it were just not talking about any specific sounds, here I'll give you some sounds. I'll give you some sounds. It's different from All right. no stress. it's stressed. Got it? So some sounds. Some sounds. Mm -hmm such as vowels, by describing their acoustic structures rather than structures, structures Good. rather than by describing rather, you have to the R, you have to okay, structures rather than structures rather than rather, rather yeah. than mm -hmm. By describing the articulatory movements involved. Pretty good. Articulatory. Let's try it again. Articulatory. Articulatory. Beautiful. That's good. So we're, we're just repeating now what we already said. Instead of describing what we do with our tongue and our teeth and our lips, we're going to talk about what happens when it hits our ear. Go. A knowledge of... Na. In American, it's na. Knowledge. A knowledge. Mm -hmm. A knowledge of acoustic phonetics is also helpful for understanding. 
also right. also helpful for understanding how computers synthesize speech and how speech synthesize speech. Once again, take it slow because there's a th and an s and it's hard. Synthesize. synthesize. Go ahead. Th synthesize speech. Beautiful. And how speech recognition works. Speech recognition works. Try it again. Speech rec recognition Recug. works. Recog. Recog. Uh huh. Speech recognition works. There works. Works. Watch the R's. And then skip that. He, they're just saying that this is discussed more fully in the book that we're going to use next semester, Vowels and Consonants, that I told you about in the first day of class. Okay? Furthermore, often the only part. Not often. All right. Kaiko O, oh, a lot of people never learned it correctly. And it sounds like O, oh, right? But make it into one syllable. Aw oh, is two syllables. Aw oh, is one syllable. Aw. Oh. All right. And uh, this is really common. So often should be often. OF is of. That's a different one. That's not the right one. Okay. So, but often, often, not often, often. Okay. And the other thing I want to say is is this a long or short vowel? Taolungo meo. Did we mention it? Hi meo. Because I say a lot of the same things to all my classes because the problems are the same from class to class. So is this a long or a short vowel? Why do you think it's short? All right, does it sound short? Law. Does that sound short to you? No. But that's not really the problem, because how do we define short and long vowels? We're going to learn it later in the textbook, but I'll tell you now, so you'll kind of k to pao. Lapse in tense, well, actually, that's just another word for long and short, basically. It's just giving us two new words. And they're a little confusing, because short vowels are not necessarily lax, and long ones are not always tense. So those are confusing. We can use those if we define them clearly. We define it phonologically. We don't define it phonetically, because there's a huge difference between British English and American English vowels. If you follow British English, if you use that for your standard, Long and short vowels make sense. The long vowels are really long. The short vowels are really short. But when it, they crossed the Atlantic in, and became American English, it was a big mess. I wouldn't call it a mess. I'm happy with it. It's fine. It serves me well. But they're different from British English. So long and short, You could eat didi guanxi, maybe. Eat didi, but bu OK? So, the way we define it is phonologically, the way we distinguish between the two. Let's just look at the word. Let's start with the word beat. This is really irrelevant, uh, irrelevant but I'll add it anyway. And a oh, hat is another thing. We'll have to talk about that another time. OK. So. Ignore these for now. We're just going to talk about these two, beat and bit. Beat is long or short? Long. Bit is long or short? Short. Good. All right. This is called a closed syllable because after the vowel, we have a consonant, right? So if we have a closed syllable, it's possible to have a long vowel. It's also possible to have a short vowel. Is that right? Beat is a good word. Bit is a good word. Is that right? If we make it an open syllable, I put bead there just for fun. There's no really no purpose except for beat, bead, bit, bid. OK, we'll talk about those another time. In any case, these are all good words. If we make this into an open syllable, we take off that final consonant sound. Is B a good word? Is that a valid word in English? B, when you'll down to zima. Will you be here? Be. Be is a good word, right? So if we take off the consonant, we still have a possible word, and this happens to be a real word in English. Beat, B is OK. All right, bit is a good word. But if we take off the consonant, do we have a word bit? Is there such a word as bit in English? No. There is no real word bit. Is there a possible word bit? 
，可能是碰巧没有那么一个字，可是 is it a possible word? B. Go sit on the B. <laughs> is it a possible word? It's impossible. English does not allow you to have a word like B, because short vowels cannot occur in open syllables. This is jumping ahead. There's going to be a chapter where we talk more about this. Actually, it'll be pretty soon, I think. So that's the difference. That's how we define long and short. If it can occur in both open and closed syllables, then it is a long vowel. If it can only occur in a closed syllable, it is a short vowel. 它只能出现在闭音节里面，那就是短母音。Got it? <coughs> This one can occur in both, beat, b, they're both fine, so therefore it's a long vowel. That's how we distinguish between long and short vowels. That's different from what you learned, right? All right, <clears throat> now that's the background. Let's work up to the question. The question is, is this a long or a short vowel? Based on what you now know about how we distinguish long from short vowels, tell me if this is a long or short vowel according to this definition. It's long because Because, Vivian? It can occur in an open syllable. For example, L A W, law. Perfectly good word. Law, raw, saw. Those are all good English words, right? Therefore, we know that a、ah、is a long vowel. Why did you call it short? I'm not blaming you, by the way, but why did you call it short? Because your textbook said that, right? Therefore, your textbooks were wrong. I'm going on record. The textbooks are wrong. Now, this should probably rock your entire faith in what you learned before, <laughs> because if that's wrong, how many other things are wrong? Is what you're asking, right? Because that one's pretty basic. It's a good question to always keep in mind. Always question everything. I am going to make lots of mistakes. I always do. I'm human. When you find them. If you happen to discover them, tell me, and then we'll talk about it and fix it. I mean, this class I think has improved over what it was at the beginning because students have said, 老师那个好像有问题哦 I went home. You're right. I checked it. You're right. So that will happen. We all make mistakes. So don't take anything for granted. Even the things that you learned when you were very young, those are the hardest things to change your ideas about. Things that you learned when you were really young, you think that's. Tianjing DE. You think there's that has to be true. There's no way to change it. But let me tell you, when you get married, a lot of those Tianjing DE things are going to change <laughs> because your partner has different Tianjing DE ideas from you. I'm telling you that right now. They will be different, and that should make you wonder about the whole idea of Tianjing DE. 真的有这这样子的事情吗？真的有天经地义的事吗 ？Always question everything. So this one is taught wrong in the textbooks. A is a long vowel. In British, as an American, 不是一个英式美式的问题，英式也是一个 long vowel, and it's pronounced long too. All right, so all of that started because we had trouble with a word. What word was it? Often. Okay, don't say often. You learned it because your teachers said that. O like in、um, like in home is a long O, 双母音 and then you learned that this is a short O, O, right? Your teacher said this is oh, this is 人家告诉我的 All right, but that's wrong. In a in British, it's all as in pork. In American, it's ah, ah. He 根本就是个双母音，三母音 maybe. Okay, how? All right, let's go back to often. Go. Often, the only permanent data that we can get of a speech event is an audio recording, as it is often impossible. <coughs> Uh, often. Often. Of, often.、Uh -huh. That's pretty good. Often. Often. Good. Okay. Impossible to obtain movies or X-rays. Not X. X is foot tall. X. X. Yeah. X. Good. X-rays. Good. Very good. Showing what the speaker is doing. Accordingly, if we want permanent data, that we can study. That yoga tea. That was it. That we can. It's that. We can. That we can、Good. study. It will often、mm -hmm. have to come from an an analyze analyze、mm. analyzing. There we go. 
and audio recording. It's not audio. It's the same sound again as an often. Audio, audio, audio. Audio. Yeah. All right. As I told you, in America, about half the people do not distinguish between ah and ah. I think I told you right in this class. I forget which I tell which class. You'll have to remind me. But ah and ah are very separate for me. I'm from Minnesota. But for about half the country, even a lot of people from Minnesota, ah and ah, 根本就不分了 So they will say often, or they will say he taught me English. He taught me English instead of he taught me English. Half the U.S. now does not distinguish between ah and ah. I happen to, so I will still keep bugging you about it. But other Americans will not bug you about it because they don't distinguish. But in any case, since I'm bugging you about it. Watch out! Often is a word we use many times because we want to hedge. 想要妥妥协一下，不要讲的那么绝对。We say often. 常常是这个样子。不要说绝对是这个样子。We say it's often like this. We're going to use this word a lot, so make sure you got the pronunciation down. So often and audio. Everyone, audio. Audio. If you're from California, you might say audio, 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 audio. Okay. All right. It's funny. I don't mind when I hear it. I notice it, but I don't. It doesn't irritate me or anything. Okay, so <clears throat> we were talking about pronunciation. Let's go back and see what we uh, have here.、Um, the only permanent data we can get of a speech event, a speech event, 就是一次讲话的一个事情，一个事件 is audio recording. So we 必须要用录音机把它录下来 We could get X-ray movies, but we can't really do that anymore because it will kill the person. So mainly, we have to use audio recordings. And so, what kind of analysis can we do with an audio recording? Just at this point in the lesson, we were talking about what the organs do, right? But now, since we're only using an audio recording, we can only analyze what we hear. So that's the point of this section. Is we're now going to look at the ears. Not to analyze which organ hits which organ. We're going to look at the ears to analyze the speech recognition. That's what this paragraph said. Okay, let's go on. 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 Let's They can be same or different. Same. Same. Not same. Everybody, that's another tough word. Every first of all, don't put the M on it. Just say say. 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 Now, don't even think about the word same. Say the word say and then say m.、Mm. Everybody, same. Same. That's correct. That's the way we say it. We don't say sim or Sam unless we have a friend named Sam. Okay. All right. So,、um, same or different in. Go ahead. Peach. Loudness. Not peach. Peach is 桃子 Peach. Why do we have to be so careful about that? And this is a really good word、uh, for for that example. Peach and peach. Peach is 樱桃 Peach is 桃子水蜜桃 any kind of 桃 But if you change the P to a B, we have a problem. Because if you want to say 海滩 you might say something else. And this happens really often. And then the person who is listening to you, how will they react? <laughs> they'll, <laughs> they're going to try to hold it in, and if they're trying to be respectful, they'll just keep it in. But you'll notice there's this funny reaction in their whole body, because if we hear 粗话 all of us react emotionally. We can't help it, 对不对 Even 那个是很轻微的粗话 And if you're a if you're a animal doctor, it's not even 粗话 But most of us react to it. As soon as we hear a so-called bad word, we're going to react emotionally. It distracts us, and then instead of listening to what you're saying, we're giggling. So be very, very careful with long and short. If and I told you that the third article in the series of articles that I wrote for Shi De, the third one is about e and i. 第三篇就是有关 e 跟 i. So please read that one. Everybody read it. It will help you. Okay, that's an assignment. You've already read the 回音 right? 看过吗 Okay, read. E and I, the second pen, because that will address this problem. There is another one. 一张一张的纸 a blank of paper, a what? A sheet of paper. Please be careful with that one. Okay, a sheet of paper. Go ahead. Peach, peach. 
loudness and quality. Start the whole sentence over so I can hear if you got everything right. They can. They can be same or different and pitch. Pitch. Mm -mm, the first one was good. Pitch. 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 Mm -hmm. Loudness and quality. All right. I'm going to tell you one of the things in the article because we may need it now. And that is, I. right? E or sign the E. E, E for the E. 有没有 Okay, 以前的学生知道吧? Yeah, okay. 国语有没有 No? Okay, former students? 有没有人当过兵? What am I getting at? 呃, 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 呃. Mandarin has 呃, but it's a marginal sound. 边缘的一个音. It has a special purpose. It's used in marching troops, when troops are marching. But it is exactly the sound we need for English. So you have the sound. It's not hard to learn because you have it. And you can distinguish e and it easily, easily if you're paying easily, huh? Easily if you're paying attention. All right, so this one's a short it, pitch. Everyone pitch. pitch. Loudness. Loudness. Quality. It's not loudness, it's loudness. Loudness. That was better. All right. We're going to explain these, but I will tell you quickly now. You need these three, first of all, for the test. I think these will be in the test. The three ways that sounds can differ from each other are, say them. What do they mean? Pitch means how high or how low the sound is. In terms of the vocal cords or the vocal folds, it means how fast they are vibrating. If they are vibrating very fast, what kind of a pitch do we get? High. If they're vibrating very slowly, we get a low pitch. Okay, that's one way that two sounds can differ from each other is pitch. In gao, zhong wen zi in gao. In gao, the butong. The second one is loudness, and that's easy to understand. However, I will warn you that when we get to loudness in the second semester, that's the hardest part of the whole course. 整个语音学从九月到明年六月最难的就是 loudness. Because then we talk about decibels, which are in Chinese. Decibels are, anybody know? What's decibel? 分贝, 听过分贝吗? 你的那个邻居如果开party的时候, 分贝, 分贝数就很高, so, Decibels are a way we measure how loud a sound is compared to another sound. And we have to do a lot of math, not a lot, a little bit of math and other things when we get to that. But it's totally doable. I'm just telling you that that's the hardest part. You think loudest, uh, loudness is the easiest thing to understand. loudness But actually, in physics, to study loudness, actually, it takes quite a bit of explanation. And then three is quality. In Chinese, we call that in zhi. Yeah, the quality of the sound. And in terms of the sounds of language, it means what you're doing with your tongue. For example, the quality of a vowel is determined by how high or how low or how front or how back your tongue is. 舌头的位置就能决定。一个母音跟另外一个母音的不同。舌头放哪里? E, A, E, A. Those are different qualities of vowels. So in the that's in that's quality. Or if it is played a sound played on a piano compared to a sound, a sound played on a violin or on a saxophone, those are different qualities, you can say as well. Okay. So those are the three ways sounds can differ. Next, keep going. Same person. Uh, those two vowel sounds may have exactly the same pitch in the same same no same mm -hmm. same pitch in the sense that they are said on the same said said. Everybody, watch this one. Another commonly mispronounced word. We talked about it before. Says said in standard American. Okay, everybody says. Said. said. Okay. They are said, mm -mm. said mm -hmm. on the same note on the musical scale. 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 Right. 
and they may have the same loudness, yet still may differ in that one might be the vowel in bed and the other on the vowel in but. All right, they're saying that we could have two totally different vowels, but they may have the same pitch. So, bad, bud, ah, uh. The quality is different, but is the pitch different? No, and the loudness was the same, pretty much the same too. So loudness and pitch can be the same, but a totally different vowel, a different quality, and? On the other hand, they might have the same vowel quality, but differ. Vowel quality is a compound. Uh, vowel, vowel quality. Vowel quality, but differ in that one was say, say. Mm, said. Said. Mm -hmm. On a higher pitch, or that one of them pitch, was. Pitch, pause. Because the letter is short, it's easy to hear. Oh, P higher, higher pitch, or that one of them was spoken more loudly. Okay, so um, we could have the same vowel quality. E, but we can make it louder. E, e, different loudness, different levels of loudness, or we could also have them on different pitches. E, e, e. All right, this part should be pretty clear, and like I said, it'll probably be in a test. Go on. Next. Um, I'm Carol. Okay. Sound consists of small vibrations in air pressure that occur very rapidly one after another. These vibrations are caused by actions of the speaker's vocal organs that are, for, mo for the most part, um, superimposed on the outgoing flow of lung air. Wow, did anybody understand that? Nobody's really paying attention. You're just listening to the sounds, right? <laughs> it's phonetics, we're just listening to the pronunciation. All right, this is a part where he's starting to explain physics. And I don't have my graphics here already. I could dig some up if we needed them. But remember when we saw those videos of the vocal folds opening and closing? All right, what is happening here? Sound is, it consists of waves. Now what does waves mean? A wave is a, a series of variations in air pressure. That's what a sound wave is. Regular, in this case, regular variations in air pressure. So what powers speech? Let's review. What powers speech? Air. All right, we're pushing air out from our lungs. And let's assume it's a voiced sound we're talking about. It's not a sound like s or h. Those are not voiced. It's a sound like e or ah. Let's just use ah. The air is coming up from the lungs. We're pushing it out. And the two vocal folds are together, right? But they're flexible. They can open and close, right? So if the air pushes hard enough, the vocal folds are going to pop open. Is that right? But they also have muscles that pull them back. So the air is pushing them open. They pop open, then they pop back. The air pushes again, they pop open, and they snap shut again. Do you understand what I'm saying? OK? Okay? So you can see with air being let out in bubbles. Is that right? Do you all understand what I'm saying? Air is pushing up. It's coming out in little bubbles. So, boom, 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 boom. The air is like this. It's a very easy air. It's a very easy air. It's a very easy air. 好像切成很多气泡一样 Is that clear or not? 听得懂吗? OK, if you don't get it, you need to go back and read it, and then I, we will have a website ready another time to show you how it works. The air is pushing up. It's going through the vocal folds. They're opening, snapping shut, opening, snapping shut. When they're open, the air is pushing through fast. When they're shut, 气压会怎样气压很大的时候把那些把那个声带把它那个蹦开了 可是气压,它那个弹回来的时候,声带又合起来了,气压会怎么样? 
一秒钟这会发生大概几次？平均两百好了 ，right？ 一秒钟一开合，一开合，一开合，发生两百次。What we hear as ah,、uh, not very even, but ah,、uh, that's opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing, two hundred times every second, and it's an alternation of high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, two hundred times every second. That is what creates sound. Kima. These are very, very tiny pressures, and that's one reason I'm using a microphone now. Because it, that, that can be heard in the range of sound. Actually, those are very small. But it's enough for us to hear each other and communicate. So this is what he's going into now. He's talking about the physics of sound waves. One sound is like this. This cycle, the sound is small, the sound is big, the sound is small, the sound is big. Okay, and. On top of that, if we didn't do anything, it would just be、uh, like that. But on top of it, superimposed, 就是套加在它的上面，有口腔里的很多动作，会使那个气流产生不同的声音，不不同的声音，不不同的那个音质。So,、uh, watch now for a minute. If I just leave my mouth open, it's ah.、Uh, but if I make my mouth smaller and my tongue goes higher, it becomes e. 这边的动作是一样的，那个 R、啊、跟 E 不同，完全是在口腔这边发生的。所以呢，是气流、气压、气压的那个大小、大小一直在在变换。可是套加在它的上面，口腔里有很多的动作，使它的音质变不一样。Clear? Good. That's great. If you got it, you're doing really well. You've like covered the first step of the physics of sound. Okay. Keep going. Thus, in the case of voiced sounds, the vibrating vocal mm -mm. vocal mm -mm. folds, oh, the vibrating、right. vocal folds chop up the stream of lung air. Lung air. Lung air. Right. So that pulses of a、uh, relatively high pressure alternate with movements of lower pressure. Now you understood this sentence, right?、Hmm. Right. Everybody understand this sentence because I already said it before we read it. It's an alternation of higher pressure and lower pressure. Higher pressure, lower pressure. That's what this sentence just said. Air from the lungs alternating. High pressure, low pressure. High pressure, low pressure. Very fast, and that creates a sound wave. Okay. Variations in air pressure.、Mm -hmm. Of. Variations. Variation. Not var. 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 Uh huh. Variations. Variations in. Air pressure in the form of sound waves moves through the air somewhat like the ripples on a pond. Very good. What are ripples on a pond in Chinese? You have such a beautiful word for this. Lian yi, isn't that a beautiful word? Lian yi, doesn't that have a conjure up a beautiful image? When you hear lian yi, don't you have a nice picture in your head? I do, anyway. That's that's how sound waves propagate. Except one difference: on a pond. 它有几度空间？我们所看到的涟漪有几度空间？基本上很像是两度空间，对不对？一个圈圈，一个圈圈。But for speech waves 是三度空间，好像是一个球，一个球，一个球的，不是一个圈圈，一个圈圈，是一整个球。这样子 ，OK？ Go on. When they reach the air of the lungs. Okay, don't stress, don't stress pronouns. Because when they reach, when they reach the ear of a listener, they cause the eardrum to vibrate. A graph of a sound wave is very similar to a graph of the movements of the eardrum. Very good. Eardrum is what? A mole, huh? All right. So this is kind of heavy, important stuff. The chopped-up air that's coming out of our lungs, going through the vocal folds, right? Chopped-up air. This is a sound. What happens when it hits somebody's ear? Because we've got alternating high and low pressure, the 高压低压高压低压一直在循环 It's doing that to the air, and the air is pushing on your eardrum. And what happens then? 
It's pushing the eardrum in and out because in the air it's pushing in and out. It's got high pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. It gets to your eardrum and it keeps on doing that. Push, relax, push, relax, push, relax, very fast on your eardrum. So your eardrum is vibrating at the same rate as the speaker's vocal folds. The vocal folds are deciding how fast the vibrations are, pushing the air in front of the speaker, and then they hit somebody's ear and it's pushing the eardrum so that it vibrates at the same rate as the vocal folds, right? So we call that the speech chain. When I did phonetics a long, long time ago in the 70s, I read a book called The Speech Chain. But it's a good book that describes this whole process. It's called The Speech Chain. Alright? We finished the paragraph. Um, so a graph of a sound wave, sound wave is very similar to a graph of the movements of the eardrum. And if you turn the page, look on page 8. See at the top where it says father? Right? That is a speech wave. A waveform. We call it a waveform. There's a, an instrument that can be used to turn speech sounds into this form. Now, what is the difference between the one at the top and that figure right under it? The argus is fang da de, so it kind of very clear. It's very small. The first one is very small. If it's small, then it becomes the one below the picture. And we'll hear more about it as we read the text. So, actually, all of you can do this really easily on your computers, and we will be doing it on our computers. We'll be making waveforms like this. Okay? It gets really exciting. It's a lot of fun. All right. Let's continue. The variations in air pressure that occur during Peter that focus pronunciation, pronunciation of the word father. 1.4. 1.4 shows the variations in air pressure that occur during Peter that focus pronunciation, pronunciation of the word father. Except he was British, so we'd say father, father. Yeah. Okay. The vowel is very similar to American, though. The ordinate, the vertical axis. Vertical axis. Vertical axis represents air pressure mm -hmm. relative to the normal surrounding air, pre air pressure. Surrounding air pressure. Surrounding air pressure. Mm -hmm. And the abs abscissa, mm -hmm. the horizontal axis, represents time relative to an arbitrary starting point. All right, we're doing science now. Okay, go back to page. Eight and Nigga is called what? It's called the ordinate. Rem memorize these words, they're just useful to you. It doesn't matter how much science you do or don't do. These are useful words. Ordinate is Hengzhou is Absissa. Okay, everybody? Ordinate. Ordinate, not Nate. Nut. Ordinate. ordinate. Abscissa. Abscissa. Good. The, what does the ordinate axis represent? Not the ordinate axis. The vertical axis, also called the ordinate. It represents air pressure. Now, what do you think that, what kind of difference in perception does that cause? Air pressure. Right? Though they can differ in pitch, in loudness and quality, is that right? Mm -hmm. So, this vertical axis, the ordinate, what is that going to reflect? The answer is loudness, is exactly right. Because how much pressure makes the, a difference in how loud a sound is to our ears, is that right? If you push hard, it's loud. And if you push really softly, it's very soft. So the ordinate is air pressure. It represents air pressure. And that represents loudness of a sound. OK. And then the horizontal axis, or the abscissa, represents time. 
So what is that going to represent of those three aspects of sound? You're, you're right, say it louder. Pitch. That's right, because we've already, we've already observed that pitch is determined by what? How many times the vocal folds vibrate per second? All right, vibrations per second we can also call what? C, P, S, that's another name we can give vibrations per second. C stands for cycles. So cycles per second is CPS, but we don't usually use CPS, we say hertz. Right, and we spell it out like this, or we abbreviate capital H, small z, hertz. So now you can already start feeling very scientific by using the word hertz very comfortably. So how many hertz per, uh, you don't have to say per second, just how many hertz that means per second. So 200 hertz means 200 vibrations per second. Right, so the abscissa represents time, and that tells us in a period of time, say one second, how many vibrations have occurred. So we've got air pressure and loudness, time, and pitch, right? Okay. Let's go on. As you can see, this particular word took about 0.6 seconds to How do we say this in English? Everybody needs to know how to read these things. 0 0.6 seconds. 0 0.6, 0 .6 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Took about 0 0.6 seconds to say. The lower part of the figure shows, shows part of the first vowel in father. The major peaks in air pressure recur about every 0 0.01 seconds. That is every one hundredth of a, sound, of a second. This is because the vocal folds were vibrating approximately 100 times a second, producing a pulse of air every hundredth of a second. This part of the diagram shows the air pressure corresponding to four vibrations of the vocal folds. The, small, the smaller variations in air pressure that occur within each period of one hundredth of a second are due to the way air vibrates when the vocal tract has the particular shape required for this vowel. All right, for that sentence, you will need to wait until second semester to understand. That will all be explained second semester. It's too much for now. But the part about how many vibrations per second is easy to understand. The peaks, that means the tallest lines that you see in the second figure on page 8, 下面比较松的那个图,你看到最高的那个尖尖尖的地方,最高最低的地方, that means one pulse of the vocal folds, 就是声带一开一合的动作, okay, 从 这一个高点到下一个高点,那就是一开一合的动作。中间有很多小的,对不对? So we've got a big peak here, and then we've got a bunch of little peaks right after it. Is that right? 那个是需要学生学。You need to learn acoustics to understand why that happens. There will be an explanation if you can wait until next semester, or you can look it up on the internet. I've also got it in some of my web pages. But for now, we don't need that. We need how many pulses are there per second of the vocal folds? And those are the big, tall pitches, OK? So from this peak to this peak to this peak, within one second, how many of those are there in this case, in this example? This is Peter Latifoget. He was a pretty big man with a beautiful, deep voice. So how many times were his vocal folds vibrating per second in this case? 100. So one one-hundredth of a second. So 一秒钟分成一百块的话,一百个部分。其中一个就是一个 pulse, so a uh, uh, hundred of them, okay. So in one second there will be a hundred of these, all right. So that's why it's 0 0.01, one one hundredth of a second is one pulse, not one second. So one one hundredth of a second we will have one pulse. 又过了百分之一秒又是一下这样子, okay. Is that part clear? 
Good. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm Alice. Okay. Mm. In the upper part of Figure 1.4, which shows the waveform for the whole word "father," the details father. of father, mm -hmm. the details of the variations in air pressure are not visible because the time scale is too compressed. All that can be seen are the near vertical lines corresponding to the individual pulses of the vocal folds. All right, let's make sure we understand that. We already explained that in the top figure on page eight. 太密了，都挤在一起，太密了，看不出个别的那个直线，那个直线全部都粘粘在一起，变成糊糊的一片。呃、uh, ，near vertical lines， 接近是直线。Is it really a vertical line? No, because time is going by. 然后呢，时间的流失啊当中，它就会往右移。So it's never going to be a straight, a perfectly vertical line. 接近 vertical， 可是还是有点往右斜，这样 ，OK。The sound at the beginning of the word father has a low amplitude. All right, amplitude in Chinese is what is amplitude in Chinese? My former freshman English student has the answer. You want to say it louder? 振幅， not 振幅， all right. 振幅， this is a very political time, so we don't want to bring that in. 振，振动的振，幅度的幅，它振动的幅度， and that is connected with loudness. And we're going to have to stop exactly there. So Alice, mark it, and then you will start next time. Okay, so that's what we wanted to do. There's just one more thing that I wanted to do that I, I've done in previous classes in previous years. And students gave me good feedback about it, so I'll continue to do it. And that's book sharing. So books that I have been reading recently that I think might possibly be of interest to you, I will just tell you what the book is and pass it around so you can have a look at it. That's it. We will see you on Monday. And don't forget your notes. Write up your notes and hand them in on Monday.